Hello. Today I want to talk about binocularity. Well, in a general way. The thing that is wrong with optometry, there's a lot right with optometry. They have brought to bear all the wonders of modern science on the analysis of the eye and the way it functions and the things that can go wrong and the structure and all that stuff. What optometry today doesn't take account of is what goes on in the brain. You can think of the eye very simply as a camera, okay? This is a metaphor for the eye. It's, it's a self-contained unit. You open up the lens and you take a picture and the picture is stored within the camera in the memory card. And this is really, this idea doesn't work for an eye because an eye is not self-contained. An eye is connected to the brain and instead of having a memory card within the camera, the eye, the messages go right into the brain and are processed by a system which is vastly complex and we need to get some idea how it works in order to understand how eyesight works. You see, you've got one camera, that's one eye, but you don't only have one eye, you have two eyes. And what if they're not the same? If you're lucky, you've got two cameras of the same model, the same brand, and they produce compatible images so that your brain has no trouble in combining those two images to make a sort of composite idea of what you're looking at. What if one eye sees things like this and one eye sees things like this? Maybe one eye sees things closer, one eye sees things further. Maybe one eye sees a slightly different colour, more reddish, more bluish. What are you going to do with this information? Your optometrist will fiddle about with lenses and things to give you the best possible focus and maybe even up the focus so that if your eyes focus like this, you get focus like this. But then they leave you to deal with it. They give you the glasses and they say, I know it feels strange, but go home and wear them and you'll get used to it. And some people do, but sometimes it's quite difficult to get used to a new prescription. And it, it demands adjustments within your brain, which you can't necessarily just do without thinking about it. So when you get prescribed your pair of glasses, I think one of the big problems people have is that their eyes are used to focusing differently to each other. One is more in front, one is more behind, and the optometrist does everything they can to even out this difference by making the lenses so that you get the exact same degree of focus with both eyes. And I think this is a problem because it's, it's not natural, it's not the way eyes are. You might say this does presuppose that the brain needs the difference in focus between the two eyes to work with. And how do you know this is the case? So what would actually be really interesting would be if someone could persuade the optical professions to make a study of perfect sight and not just imperfect sight and to produce the data. Is it the case that everybody who sees well has one eye that sees better than the other. It's certainly the case for my husband, who admittedly is a sample of one. He's always had very, very good eyesight, and one eye is sharper than the other. And so if this is the case, then we need to consider that this is part of the way the eyes function when they're functioning optimally, and therefore we shouldn't try to make both eyes see with exactly the same degree of sharpness. If you want to reduce your prescription and you're finding that your reduced prescription is not working for you, you might want to try just reducing it a little bit more for one eye or for the other eye. I don't know which one, you may not know until you've tried it, and see which one is more comfortable and has a better um, quality of vision for you.